Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel, So Much To Wear. I'm Nikki and I do projects to create, sell, and find recycled fashion. Today we are doing a project that I put off for about 10 years and I don't think I'm alone. I think most of the country is in this exact spot. I have been carrying with me a suitcase full of old t-shirts that I promised myself I was gonna make a t-shirt blanket out of. Well, I haven't done that for about 10 years until now with a little bleach too. I'm gonna bleach it up. We'll see how it goes. Keep watching if you wanna see if I fail or if I make it. To start this project, you need a pile of old t-shirts you like and a will to make them into a blanket. This project for the record is not as hard as it seems. Keep watching the video and you'll see how I completed it in less than two days. So yes, this is a weekend project after all. I wanted something to make my blanket a little different, so I decided to bleach dye all of my shirts first. Personally, I like how it kind of breaks up the blockiness per se of a traditional t-shirt blanket. So to get a marbleized drip splatter bleach pattern, I left the shirts dry. Then I arranged them in my bathtub, kind of crumpling them with my fingers so the bleach would hit the shirts unevenly. And if you want to get a splatter that's a little bit less obvious, try getting the shirts wet first. Here we go. A lot of memories in here. So I'm planning on doing this several different times. Oh God. Some splashes, some quick drips. Whoop, whoop. Now we just wait and let the magic happen. I'll split it you. After the shirts had turned to my liking, I threw them in the washer. Do this as soon as you like the way your shirt looks so the bleach doesn't continue to eat away at your shirt. If you leave it on too long, it will destroy the fabric. Also, a little hint, bleach, probably not gonna work with any of your light colored, especially like the gray t-shirts. I know this because I tried it and failed. Now that I've got the shirts I like, the next step is measuring to see the height and width of your biggest t-shirt designs. I was mixing small and extra large designs here, although some of my designs were gonna be cut off a little bit because the smallest shirts physically just weren't big enough to match the designs of the big shirts. I was okay with some of the designs being cut off as long as most of the squares looked good. Then you're going to want to add in a seam allowance to all sides. My seam allowance was a half an inch, so I added an extra inch to my tallest and widest measurements. Next step, I cut a piece of recycled cardboard from a packet I got in the mail to match the dimensions I wanted for my blanket blocks. My measurement was 12 by 13 inches. Once again, your measurement might be different depending on the designs on your t-shirts you're using, whether they're bigger, smaller, etc. Then I started chopping up my shirts. For this first part, I just removed the sleeves and then separated them from the back of the shirt. I was lucky enough to have this rotary cutter. It is not necessary for the project, but it will make things much easier for you if you have access one. This is kind of tedious work, but I did mine while I was on FaceTime with my family because of quarantine. Are you cutting a pizza or are you cutting a shirt? <laughs> now, if you want to use both the front and back of your shirt for the blanket, make sure you are cutting these separately. If you don't, you could accidentally cut into the design on the back of the shirt while you are innocently cutting out the front. We don't want that to happen. Bad news. Then I grabbed some iron-on fabric stabilizer. I got mine on a roll from a craft store that I bought when I was also supposed to do this project about three years ago. Now we're here, and now I'm actually doing the project. Now this was not tall enough for me to get two blocks out of one piece, unfortunately. There was some wasted stabilizer. I cut mine every 12 inches, which left a little bit extra on the bottom, but I cut as many pieces as I had t-shirt blocks. I would say a good place to start with a stabilizer is getting three to four yards from a store, depending on your desired blanket size. If you want it to bigger, obviously get more stabilizer. 
adding this stabilizer is gonna prevent it from stretching out, gives it like a nice stable base to stick to, make it so it's not gonna move around under the needle so much and make the whole thing much, much easier on you. Then it's time to bring the heat. Grab an iron and turn on your steam function. You are going to iron on that stabilizer to the back side of your t-shirt design. Make sure when you're doing this, the bumpy ridged side of the stabilizer is facing down onto your fabric. Once it's secure, move on to the next shirt, just like an assembly line. Once I had those done, I used my cardboard template as a stencil to cut the exact shape out for my t-shirt block. As you can see, this is a very graceful process but it's also very satisfying. Try to make sure that your template is centered on your design before you cut, obviously, and try to make it straight too, otherwise you might have problems with your design being a little bit lopsided on the quilt. And here comes the fun part, figuring out exactly where you want each block to be located on your blanket. This is what I decided on, and once I had that, I took the blocks from each column Put them in a pile, put each column in a pile in order of top row to the bottom. Now, time to crank out that sewing machine. To get started, grab the first two blocks from your first column, lay them out like they would be on the blanket, then flip the bottom over right side down on the top of the top block. Pin the bottom seam together and then double check, make sure all is right with the world and your layout before you head over to that sewing machine. Then you're just going to sew them together along that seam that you pinned and repeat that process with all of the other blocks in that column. And honestly, didn't actually take that long and I had four columns all done. I pressed the seams of all of the blocks for a clean finish with an iron and then I mentally split the design of my blanket in half and sewed the columns in each half together. Pin them together again on the sides that touched, right sides facing each other, and there we go. Repeat that process. Then sew the other two halves together, and the hardest part is done. You basically have your blanket completed. And I had this cozy gray fleece to be the back side of my blanket. I made sure to cut it. It's the same size of all of my t-shirt blocks. Then I put those on top of each other, right sides touching again, and sewed down three sides, and then halfway through the fourth. That's where I stopped. And after I did that, I reached inside that hole and pulled the right sides of the blanket through that hole and flipped the blanket the way that it's supposed to be. And I finished this whole thing off by doing a split stitch on the hole to close the seam. And finally, to tack down the middle of the t-shirt quilt to the fleece, I used embroidery floss and simply stitched an X on the intersection of each t-shirt block. Now this keeps both sides in place and makes it feel more like a blanket, less like an empty pillowcase just kind of sliding around on your lap. And that is it. You have got a very useful and cozy new blanket and you get to have all of the memories that you did out in plain sight in your room. They are no longer at the bottom of your drawer, or in my case, the suitcase in the closet. And you did a great job constructing this blanket, so it's going to last for years to come. If you've been thinking about doing this project, go for it, get started, because it's easier than it looks. One final tip would be to gather more t-shirts than you think you need, just in case you mess up on cutting a few. That way you've got some wiggle room. Backups are always good. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please subscribe and like. It really helps me big time to get this content in front of more people. And there's a ton of scraps from this project. I'm going to find a way to use them. Subscribe, hit the bell so you do not miss a video of my next project. And follow me on Instagram to see the latest updates. Thank you for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. And remember, there is always so much to wear in your closet.